I am doing wonderful. Thank you for having me on, Dustin. Um, I tell you, I st I've always been interested in writing. And, in fact, I didn't even think I was going to get married. I thought I would be right now in Hollywood, uh, hanging around with the big, big stars, writing TV and movie scripts. Uh, but I guess it was, oh, probably seventh eighth grade that i started writing to impress girls you know like like any heavy set little guy does <laughs> and and then and then uh, just blossom from there you know it's, i really enjoy putting words onto paper I don't believe in bumps in the roads. Those are just launching points to greatness. And so so I learn how not to do something so I can learn to do something. Yeah, well, you know, I try to stay optimistic. If you're pessimistic all the time, all you're going to see is, is bad things. But if you're optimistic, you're just going to see the good in the world. I mean, you're going to see the bad, but with the optimism, you can continue to go on. I, I tell you, it's just finding the time to do it more than anything. Uh, back when I first started writing, it was Chicago blues that I would listen to, and, and that would take me out of myself and into the writing. Now I, I can write... Uh, with distractions and that type of stuff. And sometimes, unfortunately, those distractions get on the page. But uh, it's, it's just a matter of, of, of setting yourself some time to write. And even if you can't come up with the ideas uh, at that moment that you want to write, maybe write something else. And that's what I did like with Best Pizza. Uh, it was so disturbing to me that I would write a couple children's stories and then I would write a couple chapters of Best Pizza, and it kind of grounded me out so that way I didn't take on uh, the characterization of my main character, which, which would be bad. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's about a man who lost his mother, and uh, he didn't react well to it. And so uh, there's a serial killer in town, and it's, he is, is taking care of, of ladies in town and then chopping parts of their bodies off and saving them as souvenirs. Yeah, so it's pretty disturbing. I, <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I don't even know where it came from, to be quite honest with you. It's just, it just came to me, and 
it's been in the back of my mind and I needed to get it out. <laughs> Right. Uh, I always keep my notebook or notepad open on my phone. So I'll come up with an idea in the middle of the night and I'll type it out real fast and go back to bed. Of course, sometimes next morning I don't know what I'm talking about, but but I always have that wealth to, to draw from. I mean, a pad of paper and a pen is what I used before that. I would keep one on my nightstand. And I would just write down anything that comes to my mind. And a lot of the stuff that in the children's books is actually stuff the grandkids say. And so we have one called Dot Dots because my granddaughter Clara made up this story about we have invisible creatures living in our house called Dot Dots. So now there's a whole story about Dot Dots and probably will be a second one, I imagine. I, th I think best pizza, as much as I hate it, but <laughs> because of the content. Because it was the best received, I guess. Uh, I, en I enjoyed the character, unfortunately, of, uh, of George. Uh, it has some aspects of of relatives in it that that are long gone now, and so I mean it's like a, a memory trip, but with a little murder in in it too. Right, right. And and I know like uh, I've got a couple uh, screenplays right now being looked at in Hollywood. Uh, one of them is a, a Hallmark type movie and I got the idea from that from going down to Santa Claus, Indiana. And so they're looking at that and then I've also got one on St. Nicholas. Uh, the real St. Nicholas, not the Santa Claus that's being looked at. I'm hoping for a full length movie. Well, I want to make a a mark in in the world that nobody else has made. I guess is what I want to say. Uh, I enjoy fiction because it lets me use my creativity. Uh, it allows me to be me uh, rather than be in a box and. As you can see in the in the fiction world right now, anything crazy is good, and anything good is crazy. <laughs> but I think it just helps me develop myself as a better person because the stuff that I'm dealing with, I can put on the page and deal with it that way rather than uh, take it out on the wife or the grandkids or the kids. Relieved until my wife starts to editing it, and then I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or or why did he do this? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. She's she's been in stories. Uh, the kids have been in stories. I've got friends in stories. I've got. One good friend right now in Twat Waffle, and she's kind of upset that I put her on a farm. <laughs> no, she runs the farm. I told her she didn't have to work too hard.
Yeah, you know, I, there's a lot of people in my life that, that are characters. We had one guy in Huntington that wore lederhosen all the time and played the accordion. I mean, so... <laughs> and I don't shy away from those people. In fact, I'm kind of drawn to the oddballs because I'm an oddball myself. So I enjoy learning about them and what makes them tick. And some of that I can incorporate in the writing. Well, I think it's just, there's, there's three sides to every story is what I always say. There's, there's her side, his side, and the right side, which is a combination of the two. So if somebody's talking about somebody to you or you've heard that somebody's talking about, you go to that person, you know, because that is going to free up that relationship. They might not understand what you're going through or, or what you're doing, but it, it, it's better to talk to somebody than to talk about them is what I always say. So you might as well go to them and it helps things come clear. And if they still don't like you, oh well. You know? <laughs> there, there, there are millions of people in the world and so not everybody has to like you. Well, I did meet Cab Calloway, the old uh, big band singer. At 3 o'clock in the morning, I, was, I had to drive down to Indianapolis to pick my brother up, who was flying in from the Army. And uh, he was the first pe person off the plane. And what's funny is nobody else recognized him, so I got to talk to him for about 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, so it was kind of fun. I got his, cab, his uh, autograph on a, on a piece of paper, and, and we, we went on our way. Uh, I've met all kinds of celebrities through being a disc jockey. Uh, I helped host a comedy night at a, at a comedy bar in Fort Wayne. So I got to meet a lot of comedians. Uh, and I can't say I have a favorite because they're all a little different. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Yeah. Right, right, and it, it, it's it's fun because you can take some of these personalities and you can see what they're doing now, and and you're saying, oh man, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> but Right. And it's like I got news today that a friend of mine is is translating The Chosen, who is another friend of mine, into uh, another language and for, for, for uh, broadcast in that town or in that country. So it's, it's interesting because I know both these people, but they didn't know I knew them as far as, you know, one knew the other. And they came together, and I think it's just really fun to watch them work together. A lot of times it's my dreams. Uh, I have very vivid colored dreams that are very bizarre sometimes, and it's not what I eat. <laughs> uh, that, and sometimes I'll just take a walk. Take a walk in nature, or as much as I can walk right now with long COVID, but or take a drive in the country and take some photographs of barns or covered bridges or something like that. And you try to think about the history of these things. Uh, sometimes I'll be reading an article and it's like, oh, I didn't know that. I wonder if I can incorporate that into a story.
Oh, absolutely. I don't think you can be a good writer without being a good reader. Because other people's written works were inspired by them. So what can they inspire us by reading them? Uh, one of my favorite books growing up was uh, Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, which was the sequel to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I wish they would have made it into a movie because it's great. And I've read it two or three times. Uh, Encyclopedia Brown, I don't know if you're familiar with that series or not. Yeah, uh, it, each chapter is a mystery. And you have to solve the mystery at the end of the chapter. The answers are in the back of the book, but more times than not, I'll just go to the next one without looking at the answers if I can't get it and then come back to it. And, I mean, that's I incorporate some of that into into what I write. Yeah, they're good for bedtime stories. They're nice and short, so the parents aren't the parents aren't reading, or grandparents aren't reading a twenty-page book or a thirty-page book to get the kids to sleep. You can read two or three of these and still uh, be able to get out and get the kid to sleep and and have the rest of your evening. Uh, and I do collections of short stories, is what I do. Uh, there might be 16 to 25 stories in a book. But, you know, it, it's fun. Okay, and, and you know, I did think of one poem uh, that I, uh, and once again, it was written to impress girls. Uh, the phone rings in the middle of the night. Should I stumble for the phone or should I fumble for the light? A lot of good the light will do if the phone stops ringing, and it was you. Isabella! Isabella drinks pickle juice. This is one of the short stories from the kids' kids department. Uh, she could have a cup of milk or water. Juice would be great, and that would be enough. She could drink all the pops she could want in this world, but why, oh why, would this little girl... She could drink out of cups or bottles or mugs. She could drink out of a faucet or a garden hose. Give it a whirl. But why, oh why, would this be the girl? See, my friend Isabella doesn't like water in a cup or milk in a mug. My friend Isabella won't drink hot chocolate or pop in a can. I can see you shrug. She won't drink juice or drink yummy milk. See, my friend Isabella likes... Are you ready for this? She loves pickle juice right out of the jar. Pickle juice while sitting in the car. Pickle juice here and pickle juice there. Pickle juice is pickle juice. Don't get it in your hair. So if you see a little girl drinking pickle juice out of the jar, you can be sure that her name is Isabella. And I won't be too far.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one, one thing I'm developing right now is a, uh, is a superhero series uh, on the Hooded Vulture and Meerkat. And it's the first book is KIELTV. Uh, it's a television station. <clears throat> Nighttime and No Moon Above. The costume that he had bought at Walmart after last Thanksgiving was way too big for him, and he hadn't had an opportunity to adjust the size at all. It'll be completely disguised who he was, and he was relying on that. The drug house he was about to enter has been operating in his neighborhood for way too long now, but he couldn't rec be recognized and still live there after all. He found an open window and called through it. He was going to have to rely on his wits and his training in the old country. He had been a black belt for years. Now, but that had gotten rotten, rusty. He hoped he could pull this off. After those children died last week, he had to pull this off. There were three of them in the living room and one in the kitchen. He would take out the one in the kitchen first. With iron fists and a cast iron skillet, that bad guy was down and he dragged him on the back porch and waited. Piazzo! yelled someone from the living room. Piazzo, you good? Bring me a beer! There was no answer as Piazzo was laying on the back porch. Piazzo, what are you doing in here? The large man walked and looked around, probably out, smoked, out back smoking the devil's lettuce. I tell you, him not used to the product. that will take Hector take care of him. He grabbed a beer and walked back into the living room. Hey, Hector, Piazzo must be out back token again. Sweet Jesus, Piazzo. Can't you control your little brother? Hector came through the kitchen and onto the back porch to just in time to see Piazzo laying there when an iron skillet hit his head and he passed out in a heap. The mysterious stranger in the costume that was too big was batting 50%. Two down, two to go. Bialdo went to the window and looked out back. He didn't see Hector or his little brother and got concerned. I'll be right back, Chaz. You guard the product and don't let be like my little brother and use it. Bialdo went through the kitchen and onto the back porch only to find himself in the same predicament as the other two. One more to go, thought the man in the costume. First, however, he called the police and got them on their way so he could make his escape. Before long, he could hear sirens and Chaz started running through the kitchen, handful of product. The man in the costume stands in front of him, iron skillet in his hands. Who the heck are you? asked Chaz. The man lowered his voice and so he wouldn't be recognized. I am, uh, I am the hooded vulture. Yes, the hooded vulture. Let that be known. There will be no drugs in this neighborhood, courtesy of the hooded vulture. With one hit, Chaz, too, was on the ground, and the hooded vulture escaped into the night, tripping over his costume as he left. i got to adjust this thing, he thought to himself, as he went into the moonless night. I hope. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to read something from Best Pizza. Just, just, just to give you a little taste. <laughs> there will, there, there will be no murder in this. <laughs> George Russell and his mom Rose bought Best Pizza in 1971. He was young and just out of high school and ha having a hard time finding a job. With George's 5 foot 2 inch slim built frame, he was picked on throughout his school days and Best Pizza was a blessing in disguise. His mom Rose had come from Sicily with the great sauce recipes. Not necessarily, necessarily for pizza, but what if they decided to use it? George never really remembered his dad. He was killed in the Vietnam War. At least that's what his mom told him. He had been a United States Air Force serviceman stationed on the island when he met George's mom. A whirlwind romance and a night of hot passion left Rose alone with a child. George's hairline was much like his mother's father, bald on top, and to make up for it, he wore extremely long on the sides and back. Best Pizza grew from a little shop he and his mom started and ended up to one of the favorites of the townsfolk of Yellow Canary, Oklahoma, frequented by the mayor, the fire department, and the police. 
They would often gather there after shift and sit and talk about their day. George had always wanted to be a police officer, but being short and underweight, he couldn't. So he listened intently to, to all the details and lived through the lives of the police. Yellow Canary was a small town of 2,500 people. Not much went on that anyone didn't know about. When George's mom passed away in 2021, the whole town showed up for him. Flowers were all over the pizza shop. Letters of condolences. Even the governor showed up at the funeral and gave George a huge hug. To say Rose and George's little pizza shop touched a lot of lives is an understatement. Then in late 2021, that the town seemed to be coming apart of the seams, they had found the head cheerleader murdered in the woods outside of town. Her body mutilated and her breast removed. To hear the police talk, it was a horrible sight. Sitting in Best Pizza, they would talk softly about the details, angering George as he wanted to hear it all. And then it, it, it was well received on Amazon. And then I got quite a few people saying, hey, can you do the, do the uh, origin story of George? And then I didn't want him to stay inside the mental hospital. So I, I let him escape and come to Indiana. <laughs> oh no, didn't visit me. <laughs> Same town, but no, you didn't visit me. Uh, that that's all I prepared. Well, right now I'm in the middle of Twat Waffle, or not quite the middle. My character's stuck in Chicago waiting for 24 hours for a bus to go south. Uh, he, met a, he met a girl online, and she sent him the money to come down to Texas and see her. And so what's funny about, about uh, Kenny is he can't tell the truth. He can write the truth, he can type the truth, but if you were tell him to come out, and say the truth, he can't tell it. So that gives awkward situations a lot of times. Like he told his mom, he told his mommy he loved her dress, and so she went and changed. You know. <laughs> yeah, and it's very hard to write because you you have to think, okay, what does he want to say, and what's the opposite of that. So it's kind of fun to write. And then after I'm done with that, I'm going to, to uh, go with the second book of the uh, Hooded Vulture and Meerkat. Yeah, I, I want to extend that out quite a, quite a few books is what I want to do. Because I think that it could be developed. Yes, yes. The Red Eagle is his nemesis. And well, well, my one of my main characters in that book is from South Africa. So I tried to find animals or birds that were from that area. So that way he would identify with them. So, and then... The the mere the mere cat is actually uh, somebody that he saved. So, and I've got ideas for other characters for for that same series. And it, it was, it's, I had just started writing again uh, about a week ago because my wife had knee surgery, so I had to take a month off of writing just to, uh, to help her with that. So I have just started writing again, and it's, it's, it's starting to flow. I'm about a quarter of the way done with, with Twat Waffle, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how it ends up because 
I know where I start and I know where I end, but don't ask me what's going to go on in between. That's all by chance. Right, it just it just flows out of me. I was 59 years old when I wrote my first novel, Don't Give Up. If you have the dream, don't give up. Start small, write, publish. And just keep doing it. As you as you develop your craft, you're going to be able to write longer. You're going to be able to to tell a better story. But if you're not doing anything, the story will stay inside you and maybe that story is something that somebody needs to hear. Yeah, J J Jenny, Jen Friend, I want to thank her for introducing us. Uh, I want to thank my wife for being my editor. I know Best Pizza was not fun to edit. <laughs> Quite disturbing. Uh, but I appreciate her her opportunity to, uh, or her willingness to uh, to edit that and, and everything else I write. And also my friends uh, that, that constantly encourage me. Uh, to do better and and to keep writing and I mean I've got a whole network of friends that are always pushing me and and telling me do it do it do it and I do the same with them and whatever they're doing I, I it's just like a give and take I've got one friend that I wish he would write more he writes well uh, but he's he's living he's living a rough life right now so he doesn't feel like writing but I encourage him I encourage each and every one of you. Uh, you've got a story to tell, even if it's your own. Uh, right now, I'm, I've got every uh, uh, spreadsheet right now of of every year of my life, and when I think of a memory, I'm writing it down on there because eventually, I'll probably do an autobiography. That sounds good. Hey, thank you for having me, Dustin. It's been an honor. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again. And just want to encourage everybody, you have a story to tell, so tell it. Thank you, Dustin.